and welcome to next episode of Warrior Way. In this video I'm going to show you martial arts from Okinawa. So bigger muscles, bigger area, easier. So come out to the side this way and then just coming down this way and up. Okay? Ten times down up. Come up with your hand up here and just blocking. So up. Probably what I would say, in my experience and also from the other senses I've trained with and the other senses from the other styles I've trained with, Okinawan Karate is very well known for being very powerful, uh, very strong, very precise um, and generally over a short distance. Uh, Gojuru, which is uh, the hard soft style, is again it's uh, close contact and has its roots from China and that way around. Um, whereas many of the Japanese styles they've come from Okinawa and then changed um, for many reasons. Training is to we agree together, we respect each other, we make it work. Okay? So when the hand comes in, remember we turn it. So as the arm is here is in here, it's turned. This here. Tension all the way up, tension here, tension here. Not this way. Okay? Everyone can drink around. So we hit. And of course you do as hard as you can do together as a pair. Everyone can train because if the sensei is good, and it doesn't mean the sensei has to be particularly talented, but if the sensei is a good teacher, then they make sure they don't push the student too much until they're ready. So it just comes in, we just hit this way, and try, let it uh, absorb in, so we don't have too much bounce. Okay? 
okay? And then we just keep on going. Like our style, and this is what's quite interesting about Okinawa, when, mm -hmm. particularly if you travel to Okinawa and train there, they are they're equidistant between China and mainland Japan. And the style, karate, there's a lot of uh, stories because in the old days people didn't really write it down. Mm -hmm. So it's word of mouth and it's, it changes as you, as you speak. But the more you learn and the more you read and the more you just are listening to what people are saying. It's from India to China, China to Okinawa, mm -hmm. and then from Okinawa to Japan. Now, Okinawans, they are of course a part of Japan, but they had for a long period of time, they weren't allowed to have any weapons. And that meant that they developed a certain style of, of, of combat, like every country in the world has their own style of combat. And the world famous one is, is Shotokan, and that's why Shotokan is, for example, over distance, mm -hmm. because they had weapons. Um, whereas the style we train here is more, um, it, it's kind of stayed, on Okinawa mm -hmm. um, and developed in its own time, its own way on Okinawa. And then back, probably in the 70s, uh, around about that time, there was a, a conscious decision made to send out ambassadors to the rest of Europe so they could learn this thing called karate. But you want this reflex, so you need to teach your body so that when it comes in, that you, you grab. And if it's the skin you grab, it doesn't really matter because it's self defense, okay? The interesting thing, and this is just a personal thought, but when it goes around you know, to China, Okinawa, Okinawa, Japan, Japan to Europe, and then the Europeans wanted to go back to the source, so they went back to Japan, and then a lot of those, my sensei from England, for example, is ex Shotokan, who's changed to Gojo, because his story was he went to Japan to train Shotokan, and then he heard of this man called Higona Sensei, who was our master, um, who's quoted as being the most dangerous man in a, in a real fight situation. And he went to his dojo, the Yoyo Dojo in Tokyo. And a lot of people changed, actually, from Shotokan to Goju then. And then, kind of full circle, then it went back to Okinawa. So it's kind of gone around and then, and then back again. Yeah. Interesting. The style we train is self-defense. Uh, this is why we do uh, Uli Tan, we, we, we strengthen our, our bones, um, it, the whole body, uh, the way we train. But of course we have the sports side of it too. So we have Kubiti, which is the, the fighting, and then we have uh, Kata. It's difficult to say, some people prefer Kata, some people prefer to fight. Um, our style has developed more with Irikumi now, we're, which is more continuous fighting, whereas a lot of the Japanese styles of Shiai, um, which is more when they're up on their feet, they're, they're very, very fast, and coming in, and maybe both sides are coming in and scoring, and the first person to score gets the point, and then Yame, the, the, the fight is stopped, and they start again. Whereas in our style, it's just different, not better, just different. Then we just continue, uh, and they it's just have to have to have the students I have, they come from different styles. Uh, Genzeru, Shotokan, um, Kyokushin, Ashiha, whatever the style is. Some from my own style, of course. Um, but all of the ones from the other styles, and of course the new beginners, have never seen this equipment before, which we will train. And again, this is very typically Okinawan. It's not Japanese, uh, it's Okinawan. And it's basically strength training for martial arts. Um, it's to make sure where we train with the chishi, uh, which is like a power stone, chi, ishi, power stone, that you're, you're developing strength in your, in your wrist, elbow, lats, shoulder is stabilized, your breathing is synchronized with the exercise, so that there's, there's, you develop focus and internal and external power. Um, and it's something that's very unique to the Okinawan styles. We have a lot of different things. We have nigirigami, which used to be old sake, um, uh, jars and that's because we're close contact so we when we're holding on we need to have strong um, fingers so if we want to grab here we want to come in and grab uh, whatever it is or we want to just block the technique and then we're grabbing and, and pushing them off whatever so that's why we train them an interesting thing actually is that in in our style um, when we make contact with a potential opponent. Of course we want to avoid that, but in a self-defense situation, as soon as that contact is made, the idea is you don't let go until you're finished. And that doesn't mean you 
smash them like this. It's self-defense. You let go until the moment where you can run away or walk away or whatever you need to do. Yeah. But the other stars, uh, from my experience, and I've trained other stars, I've been lucky enough to train with Kanesawa Sensei and a lot of the others, and Terry O'Neill and Kung Fu uh, masters too. And a lot of the stars, when they talk about it, they will uh, deliver the technique and then they create distance again. Even though for the mind, like in our style, it's interesting because you want to go into them, which your mind doesn't really want to do, your mind wants to go the other way. But you say if you keep creating distance, then the other person, you level the playing field and it's the same again. Whatever the style is, and you have to find the right one for, for you. There's no correct style. There's only, there are many styles and it's just different branches on the, on, on the same tree. So this was Gojiro Karate. It is a good combination between hard and soft techniques. This karate is designed mostly for self-defense and is mainly focusing on attacking weak spots of your opponent. In this martial arts you are focused for effective technique which can help you finish the fight how fast you can. Summarizing, I would like to thank Sensei K. Larsen for this training.